I'm here today to uh, just show you a little bit about how to use pan pastels. I'm working on a pastel map, which is a wonderful paper that I really enjoy. It's soft, but it has a lot of twos. And I'm using the pan pastels with all the different tools. And I'm going to be doing um, kind of a sunset sky, but I've played with the colors a little bit. So I'll show you how you can get started, lay your colors, just have a little fun with this meeting. So let's get started. Okay, what I like to do when I'm working on this yellow is I want to do a little sketch um, and I'm using this uh, tool which is sort of a filbert shape which I really like. So I'm going to load it with some medium gray and just kind of sketch in where things are. So I'm going to start here with this cloud and just loosely find these lines so that I can see sort of the big shapes. You can see how you get this really elegant line with these very soft pastels. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this gray pastel into the colors, and so that's why I've kind of chosen these colors. And I'm just very loosely indicating where things are. So I like using this yellow color to indicate the lighter clouds. Again, just loosely catching where they're located. I can relocate things later. It's not just like any time you use your stick pastels. You, know, you can change things very, very easily. I'll add another one. Well, we'll go with that. I also like this little guy up here. <laughs> so I'm putting him in here. What I can do is just wipe sideways on my paper towel and that takes a lot of the color off so I can change colors. I'll just put this down so I can use it later. Now I'm going to think about the color of this sky and there's a wonderful tool, it's, uh, this sponge, which I really enjoy using. It's so soft. See how soft it is? It just moves nicely, but it's firm at the same time. So what I'm going to do is load up this sponge with a couple of different blues. I'm going to start with a fairly dark turquoise color, and I'm adding another color to it, and I love the way I can mix these two. Let me show these to you separately so that you can kind of see. This is the turquoise, and this is the darker blue. Cobalt, ultramarine, I'm not sure. But I'm mixing those two together on the pad. And you'll notice that it really doesn't matter. I can, I can just go all different directions on this paper. And eventually, as I get the color built up, it works out so well. So I don't worry about trying to smooth everything out. One of the things you want to remember this pastel that I'm using is, I mean, it's not dustless, but it's so low dust that I can load this with a lot of pastel and still blend it in, and I don't have dust falling off. I'm going to wipe it off and go with a slightly lighter color. And I'm going to go with a lighter turquoise. Um, and it's kind of going to look like a big jump to start with, but stay with me, and we'll get there together. So I can blend different colors now. I'm using a little bit lighter turquoise. And kind of obliterated a cloud there, but I don't think it'll matter. I just don't think anything beats these pastels for blendability. <laughs> it's such sheer, sheer color. And you can blend so nicely. As soon as I get a little further along here, I just spread it all out. So I'm going to establish with maybe a medium gray, probably something similar to this one, all of this cloud area and any dark clouds that I'm going to use because I can play with layering the colors later. So I'll go with this one. And I, I sort of messed up this guy over here. I'm going to put him back in. So 
that's indicating a cloud, and I like this. I get big shapes. I'm not concerned with details at this point. Actually, I think this is a little bit lighter gray than I used for this sketch, which is kind of useful because I can see some of the lines through the sheer pastel. One of the things you're going to find as you get into using pan pastels is that they do things that your sticks don't do. I don't think anybody ever intended pan pastels to replace stick pastels per se, but to enhance and to do different things. And I think the one thing that this does better than a stick will ever do is put down sheer color. So as you learn control, you really can get these beautiful sheer effects because colors in the foreground tend to be warmer. I'm going to use a warm, dark purple for these mountains. Again, not worrying about detailed shapes. And I just keep wiping off the pad a little bit. I think I'll go with some black. Got some warm sort of green down in here. And really all I want to do at this point is establish the shapes. I'm not concerned about details. Just the shapes and the values. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to do something that's fun. I'm going to flop this over and I'm going to find a side that's relatively clean and I'm going to do the lights. So let's start with, actually I'm going to start with white and I'm remembering that the light's coming from down below so I'm going to put some strokes of white in on the bottom of these clouds. You know, one of the things that I just love about these tools is that in painting, we're always taught, maybe you learned this too, that we should use the largest brush we can for the longest time we can. And what that does is it keeps our strokes fresh. So using these big tools, these big softy sponges, um, I get large, strokes that are juicy and effective. Uh, now I'm going to tweak these as I go along and they're going to have a lot more um, detail and edges and all of that. But these big juicy strokes keep your painting looking fresh and painterly in a way that other things don't. So I recommend staying with the largest tool you can use for as long as you can use it. You'll know when you get to the point where it's time to change because you'll get frustrated and you can't make it work. So you've got to move down to a smaller tool. And I'm going to grab some bright, 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 bright and sock it to an orange. Because I know that as I go along, I'm going to flavor that with a lot of other colors, okay? So it's not going to end up being that bright. Okay, let's pull some yellow into that orange as well. Now see how brilliant that is? And the sun is really kind of coming from off on the left side, in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing. While we're here in the neighborhood, let's grab some yellows to put into these clouds using this big wedge sponge. It'd be just fine. Some blues, that turquoise back into the cloud. Let's get that dark turquoise in place. I love this color. 